Uh, it's okay, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it seems to be wide angle. Yeah. It's, um, so I've started recording. Okay. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Okay, let's, um, let's begin by uh, reading at, I mean, looking at one verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. <clears throat> okay, um, 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 27. Okay, it says, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Okay, so Paul gives this very sober, you know, um, testimony about himself. And he says, you know, I discipline myself. I discipline my body and I bring it into subjection. Um, and he says this. And then um, if we see the verses before that, he explains, right? He goes on to explain verse 24. So we're reading 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 24, right? It says, uh, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the price? Okay? So run in such a way that you may obtain it. Okay. And everyone who competes for the price, so it's talking about effort, okay? effort put in daily. It's talking about the life being a race, right? So he says, um, okay, run in such a way that you may obtain the price. Then verse 25, and everyone who competes for the price is temperate in all things, meaning they are disciplined in all these things. They are competing for the price. And they do it to obtain a perishable crown. Right? He's still talking about athletics and you know the the competitions of that day. So he's saying they are they are competing for a crown that is perishable. This accomplishment, this prize, whatever is perishable. Uh, but we do it for a imperishable crown. You know, the race that we are on, the things that we are going after pursuing, it's an it's an eternal value. Okay, so we do it for an imperishable imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus. It says, not with uncertainty, with certainty. This, or thus I fight as one, not as one who beats the air. Okay, so this run, race that I run, I run with certainty that I might obtain the price. This fight that I fight, this fight of faith, I fight it in such a way, not with uncertainty, not as one who beats the air, but as one who finds the mark. And so, um, so that is what he says. And finally, he says, but I discipline my body, discipline myself and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself might become disqualified. So uh, I mean, there's a lesson for all of us in terms of effort, in terms of life itself, right? in terms of ministry, that uh, there's this big aspect of discipline. Okay, much as we, you know, we, uh, we are living in grace, this dispensation of grace, right? And uh, we have the favor of God upon us. We have the word of God. We have Holy Spirit leading us. We have all that. There is this one aspect which, which, which gives us longevity in ministry, endurance, right? It's not just for today, but it's for tomorrow, for the months ahead, for the years ahead. And Paul says, you know, I discipline myself. Okay, so... Um, so we know discipline is, is not good for the body. Right? It's in the sense um, we our body fights against it, rebels against it. Right. So discipline is doing something that you don't want to do. Discipline is doing something even when you don't feel like it. Right. And uh, and keeping at it. Right. Even when we don't see results. Even when we don't see rewards. Nobody comes and you know pats us on the back and say, "Hey, well done, well done." No, it just that doesn't happen. But then we keep at it, and right? whether people are watching or not watching, we keep at it. And so, um, and we see that is that is discipline. So he's saying, you know, I discipline myself. There's no one coming to discipline him. He's saying, I discipline myself because I I want to. I want, I'm here for the long thing. I'm not just here for today or to, tomorrow. So yeah. So with that, uh, let's just pray. You know. Um, and this, ask the Lord, Lord, you give us the strength, you know, strengthen our wills, uh, our thoughts and imagination, everything, Lord, let it be strong, 
uh, may we have the strength to say yes may we have the strength to do those things even when nobody's watching god may we have those strength to do uh, what is right when even nobody's around to appreciate or applaud us but uh, enable us to discipline our bodies to discipline ourselves let me just go ahead and you pray hey Yes, Lord. Thank you. Father, we thank you for the riches of your grace, God. We thank you for making yourself available for us, Lord, in a covenant, God. We thank you for Lord, making all of yourself available for us, God. Lord, so amazing, God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your favor, God. And Lord, today, Lord, even as we are reminded to discipline ourselves, Father God, Lord, that um, the fruit of self-control, oh God, will be, Lord, will bear fruit in our lives, Spirit of God. And we pray that, Lord, that we will be such people who will be, whose lives will be centered on your word and led by your spirit, oh God, that we will do what is what requires to be done, Father God, even when there's no one around to appreciate, when there's no one around to Tell us, God, that we will do it ourselves, God, that we will discipline ourselves, discipline our bodies, and bring it into subjection. Because, God, and that's the key for longevity in ministry and, and the key to successful life as a, as a believer, Father God. And uh, yes, Lord, we want to be walking in a victorious way. Lord, we pray that you will enable us, God, through your word, and you will enable us through the work of your spirit. Strengthen us today. Strengthen our minds, strengthen our wills, God, to say yes to you and to say no to the things uh, that we ought to just refuse and forsake. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' master's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So um, I think last last class we looked at um, you know some of the uh, hindrances, right? some of the hindrances to God-given prosperity. Right? We looked at uh, what is uh, success, what is prosperity, what is growth. And we say that, uh, and we looked at uh, the fact that hey, there can be barriers, there can be hindrances. Right? And we looked at uh, four or five of them, four of them, right? Um, and, um, uh, okay. sorry, six of them. <laughs> we saw that the last one was effort, okay. insufficient effort or lack of effort. Even that can be a barrier, okay? For what God wants to bring into our lives, this itself can be actually a hindrance, a barrier, okay? So today, let's look at some of the principles for divine prosperity, okay? A principle. A principle is something, um, you know, uh, something that we carry out, uh, something that is based on truth, and it's a guiding, uh, let's say, an instruction, Okay, something that guides us and instruction. Um, uh, and I'm just trying to see if there's any other word for it. You know, an instruction, a guideline, something that helps us to when we carry it out to achieve something. Right. So it's here's a principle, something that guides us, something that uh, enables us to reach um, the objective. Okay. So we see that um, uh, when we look at these principles for divine prosperity. You see that God has actually set this for us as believers. Okay, as uh, we see it in His Word, there are these principles. Okay? But we need to understand that one thing is um, the person who gives us the principle uh, is important, is bigger than the principle itself, right? So by that we mean that our relationship, our um, our closeness, our intimacy with the person. Okay, we're talking about the presence, the person, the one who gives us the principles. You know, that's the primary thing. Okay, uh, if we eliminate that, or if we remove that out of the picture, then these following these principles, these become mere um, mere form. Okay, it will still work. Because it's the truth, right? But it will lack that power because we've removed the person out of the way. 
Okay. So the world still functions. You know, these principles, uh, you know, do unto others what you would like to be done to you. It's a biblical principle, right? Love others uh, despite whatever they have done, you know, despite the wrong. It's a, it's a biblical principle. It will. St it's still, you know, it still works. Right? It's changed it's transformation. How much more when we have this connect with the person, with this relationship, this closeness, this walk with the person who gave us these principles? Okay, so I'm just saying that the that is of primary importance when we when we focus when we give importance when we walk in relationship with the person uh, of Christ right and then close the principles so let's look at the principles okay um, these principles were given so that uh, having understanding of let's say finances having understanding of you know how we need to work Having under, having this understanding that God is actually for us, and God wants us to thrive and flourish, be successful, have growth, right, and uh, be prosperous. Having this understanding, God really wants us to walk in His ways. Okay, the the mistake many people make is, yeah, I know that God wants me to be successful. Maybe in you know this kind of work, in this line of work, this business. Whatever God wants me to be successful, but then how do we operate day to day, right? How do we function day to day? Is it based on the ways of the world, or is it based on the ways of the word? Very important, right? Because okay, I have this thing that God wants me to be successful. Fantastic, you know, we are very happy. God wants me to do well. God has given me this opportunity. God has given me this work. God has given me this thing. You know, I, I'm, and I'm going to do it. We are very excited, right? We start to do it. Then, when we want to, you know, let's say it, it uh, things to things to be successful. Maybe it's business. Maybe it is uh, it's whatever work. You know, maybe God has called you to in a line of work. Um, maybe it's it's ministry. Right, uh, spiritual ministry, spiritual leadership. So, what are we doing? You know, are we doing it according to the ways of the world, the values of the world, the principles of the world? Okay. So, the well, some of it could be in line with the truth of God's word, but we see that most of it is not. Right. For example, if you look at um, some of the things that uh, you know, we I, I worked in a company which was in sales, uh, which was into sales. So this was the, you know, uh, this was always the thought. Okay, you do whatever it takes in order to achieve your targets, whatever it takes, right? So the the, the boss would say, by hook or crook, you need to achieve. So, and the word they use is, you need to be smart. You need to be smart, and then they say you know, you're doing in a, you're going a very straight way. <laughs> you need to change. You need to be smart. You need to be street smart. All that is fine, but what they're actually saying is that you take some crooked paths, you give some, you know, uh, promises to the customer which are not really some. You do something you. Um, you know, in in uh, I don't know in Tamil they have this thing. You know, um, for a sales guy, right? For sales guy, the, the, I'll just try to translate. Okay, so it's kaila pai, which means you know, in a hand you have a bag. Okay, sales guy has a bag. Kalitla tie, which means uh, on the neck you have a tie. <laughs> okay, wearing a tie. Then the third one is vaila pai, which means in the in your mouth <laughs> there are lies. Right, so you have a bag, you have a tie, and then in your mouth you have lies. So that's you know that's a typical you know definition of a sales guy. You know you have a this thing. You, know, you have a bag, you have a tie, and then you have a you know the poi is coming out of your mouth, the lie. Uh, so you know, so everybody is comfortable with it. Then the problem is you become a believer. I, I'm saying problem within quotes. You become a believer, then you understand. Hey, God really wants me to be successful. You know, even in this world, even in this kind of a setup, God wants me to be successful. Then the challenge is, do I go with the same thing? You know, the bag, the tie, and the lies, or do I change? 
right? Can God enable me to prosper if I go against those kind of things? This is how they are doing it, right? Saying many things, you know, the guys will say, you know, I, I was in an organization which was selling pagers, right? Those days, pagers were big. Have anyone seen pagers, you guys? You've seen, you, you've got a pager? Yeah, not code actually, it's a phone number. Yeah, so uh, I think in some places people still carry it. So it's a phone number which comes. It's like a early text, you know, SMS thing. So it's only one way you can receive it. And in order to contact the person, you'll have to go call from a booth, right? So they'll send a message, please call back. You get the thing and then you go and call back. Now everything's come together in one you know, device. So I was in that organization, so like selling pages. So the, the guys will say anything and everything in order to sell a pager, right? You know, everything, you know, they say, okay, can this do this? Customer will ask, you know, will this work beyond this range? Definitely, sir. And, and the guys will know that that place, that area is a problem. That's a black spot. We don't have any of those towers, communication towers there. The message won't reach. Definitely, sir. <laughs> right? And then just make the sale, come back, log in. Who cares? I know after two, two, three days, you won't pick up the call. Like the guy's calling, complaining. Let someone else handle. I've made the sale. I've achieved the target. I'm fine. Right? So then here comes the believer. You join, and then you want to, you know, you know that God wants you to be successful. Do you work in that way? Okay. So that's the challenge, right? So God's way of success and growth and prosperity, God says, you work in my principles. Similarly, you know, with, when it comes to business, it's a challenge. You know, it's, it's not easy, right? There is always an easy way out. Sean, you have a question, no? Uh, no, so I've seen like uh, most uh, bank people, what they do is whenever they're getting loans, they just give it to anyone they no, it doesn't matter like uh, who they are. Don't usually look at your background, your financial, how you are, and then yeah. they give loans. But now it's become like this thing, like it's a uh, thing they want to get through with it. That's all. Not yeah. like bothered if that person is capable to pay back the loan or not. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the fast forward the whole thing. Um, uh, can we just? This one. Yeah, I think that's too much. Is is that too much? Just increase the volume a little bit. Is that okay? Is it okay? Uh, Nina, is it okay? It's fine. Okay, great. Okay, so um, so so this is what you know. It's uh, it's it, it, it's challenging. Yes, but God has promised in His Word. So for us, it's it's we need to decide. You know, do I do it God's way? Uh, because if we're going to mix up, we start the day with prayer, and then we you know continue the day with whatever we want to do. And end the day with thanksgiving and worship, <laughs> right? So, is that what you want to do? You know, maybe you're a businessman, maybe you're a working professional. You know, we need to take a stand. Yes, it's going to be difficult. You know, there have been times when the boss would say, "It's okay, just go ahead and do it." So, the boss would say, "You know, just go. Fine. You just tell him whatever. You tell him this. You do it." Right? So, and at that moment, you need to take a call. As in, you need to decide, am I going to live by God's principles or not? Right. Um, and the boss might even say, hey, look at that person. He's also a Christian. You know, she's also a Christian. Look at the way. You, you also do it. It's okay. Just one time. It, it'll be fine. I'm with you. He's the boss. And he's saying, I'm with you. And I need you to do this. Right. So you need to. It's, it's a stand that you need to take. Right. So, so the thing is this, that we cannot mix the ways of the world whenever it's convenient and you know mix the principles of god's word whenever it suits us right we just go with one thing which is you know god's word god's principles all the time
right? And uh, that's the invitation we have. That's the challenge that we have. Okay, so uh, the principles of God's word definitely higher, greater than the thoughts of the the wicked, right? Because that's what he says uh, in Isaiah fifty-five, right? Um, is it Isaiah fifty-five? Yeah. Um, so, uh, so God says. Um, let the wicked forsake his way, 55 and verse 7, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, let him return to the Lord. Okay, um, And then in verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, your ways, my ways, says the Lord. For the, as the heavens are higher um, than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And of course, he's talking about the wicked. He's talking about the person who whose thoughts are not in line with God's thoughts, or whose ways are not aligned with God. So he's saying, you know, my thoughts, ways are way high, higher, way different than, um, you know, a person of this nature. Okay, So the principles of God, when it comes to carrying out certain things that God wants done, are definitely different. It might seem shocking at times, right? It might seem like, oh, you know, uh, what's wrong with these guys? And what's wrong? Uh, are they some kind of uh, fanatics? You know, and I don't know if people have called you that, or you know, uh, you're saying, okay, this is, you know, when, when I actually, you know, at times like you take a stand and you say, okay, uh, simple things. You no, know, I cannot tell a lie, and I cannot give a wrong commitment. Uh, people look at you in shock, and what's wrong? It's just a very simple thing, right? But that's how vastly different God's thoughts and ways are. Just think about it. Right? So, because some some things have become normal in the world, normal, right? which means the ways of unrighteousness. It's become normal so much so, as a believer, we get desensitized because we see these things happening on a daily basis over and over again, that this seems to be the value. This seems to be the way that people are behaving, the way that people are speaking, the way that, you know, the people are esteeming things. So it seems to be normal. It doesn't shock anymore. And so for the believer, you know, if you're not careful, we think that, OK, it is actually normal. But then God has a way of sensitizing us to the truth. Right? We read it and then we see that, Lord, your ways are different. You know, these, these are different. This I cannot treat it as normal. Okay. So I'm just saying that you know, principles of God right, might seem to be like, hey, this is this seems to be very, very different from the way the world is doing. You know, don't be shocked, don't be alarmed. These are these are the ways of God. These are the thoughts of God. Okay. You have something to ask, uh, Sean? Um, so I've seen that, you know, from very young age, all of us have been brought up certain values, so, you know, don't lie, don't cheat, mm -hmm. you know, but like basic thing, like don't lie. We've all been learned, we've all learned at very young age, but even though we've learned that when we grow older, we, we do lie. It's not like we don't stop lying. We just like gotten better at hiding that fact. Sorry, gotten what? Gotten better at hiding that fact that we are lying, but mm -hmm. we do lie when we do business, any such thing. Like, mm -hmm. for example, you say that uh, you have an assignment that a boss has given you, and uh, you know, we just to make him happier, saying, that, Yeah, I've completed, but you still not completed. Is that, yeah, yeah, simple things, you know, like you're supposed to be there in one place and you've not yet started. <laughs> yeah. They call, ask you, Have you, uh, where are you? Hey, I'm on the way. <laughs> you're just, you know. <laughs> trying to get your cab or auto or ride, whatever. You're just trying to book, and it's still, you know, searching. You say, I'm on the way. Right? So um, so the thing is this, you know, God is sensitizing us, making us alive to the fact that okay, these are his ways. You know, uh, truth is something precious, um, and everything that proceeds out of that. Because Jesus says, I am the truth, right? right? It's, it's, he, this, is, this is who he is. So when we reject truth, when we mix truth with something else, we are actually compromising on the person of Jesus, right? So, yeah. So let's um, let's look at uh, Isaiah forty-eight. 
Okay, Isaiah 48 verses 17 and 18. Okay, we uh, we've seen this before. This verse, right? So thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Then your shalom, your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. And then you know, he goes on to say descendants and so on. So um, so the, the Lord is saying, you know, I'm the Lord. I, I teach you to profit. I teach you to be profitable. I teach you, um, the, and which means that I need to hear. I need to obey. I need to implement what he's teaching, right? I need to actually follow, put in place what he's teaching. So he's saying, I am the one who's teaching you to profit, to live in a way that is successful that is profitable, that is beneficial for you, who teaches you to profit, and um, who leads you by the way you should go. Okay, So he gives these, he, he, he sets the objective and also gives us the pathway. And he says, I lead you in the way you should go. Okay, Oh, that you had heeded my commandments. The Lord is saying, you know, if you had if you had only listened, if you had only obeyed, then your peace would have been like a river, ever flowing, okay? and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Okay, um, so uh, for us to live, for us to operate, for us to listen to God's ways, it is for our benefit. Okay, it is for our benefit. So we need to just understand that. Yeah, God, I know that this seems op opposing to what. Is happening around me, but in the end, you know, uh, this is what you want for me. This is for my benefit. You are teaching me to profit, right? Okay, so let's look at a few principles here. Okay, the first thing is putting God first. Okay, putting God first, right? Uh, Matthew 6 and verse 33 says, Seek first, right? Putting God first, seeking first. What are we seeking? Matthew 6, 33. What are we seeking? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Right? So righteousness, kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So the Lord is just saying, you know, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Right? And he says, and all these things shall be added. So it comes with a you know, instruction, promise, instruction, and then the result of following that instruction. It says, seek for the kingdom. What is the kingdom of God? When you say, seek first the kingdom, how do I seek first the kingdom? Anyone? Online class also? Mm -hmm. Yeah, standards of God. But when he says, you know, seek first the kingdom, uh, I think we need to understand what is a kingdom, right? A kingdom is the the place. You know, typically, if you look at a king, kingdom, the king, it's a geographical location or area where the king has, you know, his he has authority. He's looking after his, his, you know, this territory. If it belongs to the king, he's ruling, reigning all the subjects, and he's in charge. His, his protection and he's all that is there. So that's the kingdom. Right? So the Lord is saying, you know, seek first the kingdom of God, which means you seek the influence, the domain, the rule and reign of the the king. And we know the kingdom of God is, it's ever increasing and is, and is everywhere. Now, he is the king. Right? So he's saying, seek first the rule and reign of the king. Right? You be submitted to the rule and reign of the king. You invite the rule and reign of the king. Right? And you are part of the kingdom, the domain. So you invite, which means be in submission 
there's so many things, right? Be in submission to the king. Don't be in rebellion to the king. Seek his rule and reign. But do what the king would do. Do what the king is asking you to do. Right? Seek first the kingdom of God. And then he says, and his righteousness. Right? Righteousness meaning it's the nature of God, the ways of God, the desires of God, the delights of God. No, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Right. So putting God first. Okay. So practically, how would we do it? You know, maybe as students, as uh, as a you know business person, as a working professional, how would we do it? You know, it sounds nice to say, okay, I'm putting God first. I'm seeking first the kingdom. But you know, we need to have a understanding. Okay, uh, this is how I will do it. How I am today? Maybe I'm a I'm a student. I'm a single person, married, whatever. This is how I'm going to put God first. You know. So how would you do it? Sorry, uh, yeah, Richard. Making the right choices. So, which means you're saying, okay, choices that are right, right? Yeah. And then so, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit in your choice, in your decisions. Okay. Yeah. Prioritizing God's words and God Himself. Right? Um, again, Sunina so says, doing it God's way. Um, Shaya Paul, we need to follow the rule and obey God. Okay. Um, prioritize, okay. Just check in uh, my relationship with Him, seeking God in prayer and word. Okay. So, in a personal setting, seeking God, uh, follow His rule, doing everything God's way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so Anand, this is, repeat what you said. Uh, in words and in our lives. Okay, okay. So esteeming His word. Okay. So, um, so it's good to, you know, think through this. You know, see. Okay, how can I do it in my natural setting? You know, this is how I, you know, I wake up, I do these things, I get ready. Uh, this is how I spend my day. You know, these these are things. These are my habits. Uh, this is how this is how I relax. This is how I entertain myself. You know, this is what I do as a hobby, right? All these things. I think we need to, you know, think: okay, How can I put God first in all these things? Right? Or am I putting God first in all these things? Right? In a very practical way, right? So we are here. We are talking about, you know, when it comes to finances, when it comes to money. So when it comes to our Dealing with money and uh, uh, you know uh, looking at uh, handling of money, um, uh, receiving, working towards uh, you know receiving money and all that, we need to put his values, his principles, his guidelines first above everything else. Okay, so um, you know people sometimes we have this thing. Okay, when it comes to money. Okay, I yeah, I think I I, I deserve it. I've earned it. I, I I and I know it's in short supply, so I need to spend it the way I want it. Right. So you know, sometimes we have that mentality. I need to spend it. No, I I deserve this. I've I worked for it. I've spent a lot of time on it, uh, or to in order to receive this, and I've got it. Therefore, you know, I I have certain needs. Right, this money needs to uh, stretch till you know the end of the month or end of the year. Sometimes, right, this money needs to be there, and every day is you know, sorted, and this is it. And I need to spend it. Sorry, Lord, <laughs> there's not much left. I can't do anything. Right, this is it. It's all budgeted for. It's all allotted, allocated. Right, but when it comes to Putting God first, and God might say something that goes beyond our planning and our reasoning, and all that. God might say, "You give, right?" Uh, but Lord, what about me? Right? What about what about things? You know? But when when God specifically says, "You give," and you know it's not just your emotions or your guilt or you psyching yourself. 
we need to work on it. Right? We work on it as in we need to obey. Right? And then and then just you know, just go with it, obey his word, obey his instruction. And there's a blessing in it, and there's a blessing for others also in it. Okay. So very practical ways we need to um, put God first. Second thing is um, you know, doing what God wants us to be doing. Okay, this is this is uh, similar to what we saw um, that we do it God's way. We do it according to His righteousness and uh, not according to our way. So, doing what God wants us to be doing. Okay, um, th there are several references, and I'm just going to uh, look at one. Um, Let's look at uh, Psalm uh, 33, okay, verses um, 18, 19. Okay. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Okay. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. Okay. And in fact, the words, verses following that also, you know, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Okay, So it talks about the Lord and his eye and his attention on those who hope in him, on those who trust in him. right? And um, which means that there is something intentionally that I'm doing. God, I'm putting my hope in you. I'm putting my trust in you. I am esteeming you above everything else. And I'm waiting to hear from you your instructions right, uh, on what I should be doing. Okay, whether it's handling of money, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's some investment, whether it's uh, you know, how I should actually get this. Um, should I go after these things? right? Doing what God wants me to be doing. Okay, very, very important. Okay. The third thing is practicing righteousness. Practicing, let righteousness dot not be a theory, let righteousness not be a concept. Um, you know, it's very easy uh, because we uh, hear it all the time, maybe in church and uh, definitely in Bible college. And, you know, we are talking about righteousness, talking about holiness, talking about something. And then, we, 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 we can, you know, make the danger of compartmentalizing it, okay, say, this is in this setting, okay, I hear about it, and I talk about it, uh, I even sing about it, I worship God with it, but, um, you know, is my life like it, or is my life totally devoid or apart from that, right? Is righteousness a practice in my life, okay? So all areas of my life. So I make it a practice. So then the thing is, when it comes to when it comes to the significant things that matters, when it comes to the significant decisions, then we don't struggle, right? If righteousness is not part of my normal thing, small things, then when it comes to the big significant decisions, then there is a great battle, right? There's a great battle because the self is struggling to give in to righteousness. The flesh is struggling to give in to righteousness because righteousness has not been a practice, has not been part of our lives. Okay, so practice righteousness. So these are broad concepts, but we need to you know, make it real in everything that we do. Okay, so these are, what are we looking at? We are looking at principles for God given prosperity. Okay. So so God is, well, He is for us. He is for us. He is with us. He's cheering us on. He's saying, you know, this is this is my heart towards you. You know, I see you as a as a child, as a son and a daughter, and as a father would provide, I would I want you to provide. But I want you to thrive in it. And for that, I have placed certain things. I have placed certain principles, right? and I want you to pursue those principles, right? So that is why we're looking at it. Okay, um, so practice of righteousness, okay, doing the right thing, and doing the right thing 
again it can be very very subtle doing the wrong thing can be very very subtle where we can justify ourselves and saying i'm doing it because of a greater cause okay because of a righteous cause uh, uh the, the the you know the, I'm, I'm saying you know I'm, I'm compromising on certain things i'm not doing what is right um, but it's okay it is okay. It is because I want to be kind to others. It is because I want to be... We can justify it and reason uh, within ourselves and justify in so many different ways. Okay? So, uh, practice of righteousness, very important. Okay, the next thing is diligent work. We looked at it. One of the hindrances, the last one that we looked at was insufficient effort. Okay? So, diligent work, work is a way or an avenue through which God provides. Right? The Word of God says, in all labor, there is profit. In all labor. Right? So which means that God really wants us, He's designed things in such a way that we would work. He has given us skills, or we are, He's given us the ability to get skills, be skilled, and to work. Right? So, okay, in terms of ministry also, God wants us the work of ministry itself. When you look at work, I'm not just talking about employment, right, or professional employment, right, or just business, even the work of ministry. Okay, it is work, which means it requires, what is work? It requires something for you to do. You need to, you know, you can't just sit and, you know, do nothing. God requires us to put in effort and do something. It takes effort. So what is diligent? What is diligence? What does diligence mean? Anyone? Yeah. Consistent. OK, consistent is one part of it. Right? Yeah, to be wholehearted, to be focused, and again, you know, to be consistent as well. So that is diligence, right? So to be wholehearted, to be, uh, to give your everything, not hold back, right? Um, it also has this picture of intensity, right? Focus, intensity. So work we can do, like there are different ways of doing certain things. Okay, uh, you know, if you say, okay, uh, I need to sweep and swab, I can I can do it in a certain way. Right, like um, we have some people, you know, uh, there's one person who comes and helps us. Um, if you kept a bag there, like on the floor, <laughs> I've noticed, like, um, like you should sweep around it. Right, it, it's not. It just doesn't take. And she's a good person, and I'm grateful that you know we have somebody to help us and all that. But the thing is this, you know, if you I like I, I normally put the guitar on the you know drop it somewhere. So just sweep around it, right? So nowadays what I do is I take the guitars, I just put it on the bed, you know, so that this okay, please. <laughs> I'm making space to so there's a there, there's a way we can work, right? We can work diligently, or we can just go with that just enough. And um, you know, my teachers complain. Uh, this is a confession now, okay? My teachers complained when I was in school, saying, you know, Jay Kumar is, is very content, okay? Whatever marks he gets, he's very happy. <laughs> Whatever marks, he's happy, you know, he's just, is it just 40? He's very happy. He doesn't want to, you know, he's very content. So that was my, that was the complaint, complaint of my teacher, he said, with my parents, he said, he's very content. He needs to, we know that he can, but he does not. And we know that he's, he's capable, but he does not. Okay, so when it comes to work, we can have you know, this and say, God, I, I worked, didn't I? You asked me to work. I did the work. Nothing's happening, God. Nothing's happening. You put it in your principle. It's there. It's there in the word. And I'm working. And Nothing's happening. The Lord is concerned about you know our heart, our attitude with which we work. Okay, so diligent work. Okay, let's look at. Uh, I think Proverbs is full of it. 
let's look at a few, um, um, just a couple of scriptures in Proverbs. Okay. Um, let's look at Proverbs 10. Okay, Proverbs 10 and verse 4. Okay, it says, He who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Okay, he who has a slack hand, meaning one who's complacent, one who is uh, um, who's lazy, and right? who has a slack hand um, becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Okay, the next chapter, chapter 11, and um, if you look at verse 16, a gracious woman retains honor. Okay, 11 verse 16. But ruthless men retain riches. Okay, a gracious woman retains honor, but ruthless men uh, retain riches. Okay, so negatively, it talks about the ruthlessness uh, and also talks about the gracious nature with which one retains honor. Okay, so uh, that's a negative example. You know, one goes by unrighteous means in order to reach and retain certain things. Okay, let's look at 12 and um, verse 24. Okay. Chapter 12, verse 12. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. Okay, so uh, so when, we, when, we, when we're looking at diligence, also the whole aspect of Doing it voluntarily, okay. Doing it volunt voluntarily in the sense, you know, you take initiative for doing it. Okay. The, so it says, the hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be fo put to forced labor. Okay. Let's look at verse twenty-seven. The lazy man does not roast what he took in hunting, but diligence is man's precious possession. Okay. Um, okay. I see some. Yeah, faithful working uh, faithfulness, right? Thank you. Yeah. So we see that um, okay, that work is something designed by God. Okay. Uh, you know, you you could also read uh, uh, the publication that we have on work. Um, I think it, it'll be really useful. You can go through that. Right. So work is something that's designed by God. Or work is something that is. Uh, you know, uh, that is established and, and God has given to us. And it's a way by which he provides for us. Okay. So, yeah. So we'll stop here and we'll continue next class. Thank you so much. God bless.